this lecture we are going to be discussing about uh, another kind of sorting algorithm uh, which is very similar or um, in other words uh, uses some information from the inputs to sort the data uh, like as in counting sort and uh, on an average this algorithm uh, sorts um, your input sequence uh, in the order of n. So let's see uh, what is uh, bucket sort so another uh, same thing what I was discussing in the previous lecture uh, what if we can do sorting in linear time wouldn't it be great uh, even though if we achieve average case sorting time in the order of n it would be it would have tremendous advantage bucket sort assumes that uh, your input input sequence they are drawn from a uniform random distribution okay and it has an average case running time of order of n so what it means that uh, the input sequence what your algorithm is going to take uh, it uh, it is drawn or it is generated by some sort of a random process uh, and uniformly distributed over the interval between 0 to 1 it has advantage in terms of uh, how we design our sorting algorithm we will see in a um, in a minute so what bucket sort does it basically divides the interval uh, 0 to 1 into n equal sized sub intervals or you may think of a uh, whole interval between 0 to 1 is divided between uh, is divided into n buckets okay? and those n buckets uh, are where from where the number n comes number n is you know uh, is the length of your input sequence say if you are sorting 100 uh, you know numbers then your length will become n will become 100 or say million numbers then you divide interval between 0 to 1 into say 1 million pieces and each becomes a bucket okay. now after uh, distributing the inputs into buckets next job is very simple that you sort numbers in each bucket and you get the answer now there, there might be variants of bucket sort that um, to sort numbers in each bucket you may again use bucket sort or you may use some other sorting algorithm depends depends on your how big is your input data but that's the basic idea is that uh, the input sequence you have n numbers input sequence you have to sort so first of all make sure that all n numbers they fall in between the range of 0 to 1 and once you have numbers in between 0 to 1 you make the buckets and put the number in respective bucket so it's very similar to like counting sort you know where you have used the information that okay my uh, input number is less than this number and you have the second array be where you are putting the number or uh, you you make sure that your number is not greater than certain number certain integer and you you make use of that information in counting sort same way in the bucket sort now no, notice that here we need one more array uh, to hold our buckets basically or to hold the information or pointers to our buckets okay now let's see the algorithm it's a it's a simple very simple algorithm 
Now, as I said here, we have assumed that our, our input is an element array and each element satisfies this condition. AI, each element of the array is in between 0 to 1 okay, and uniformly distributed in the interval. Uh, if uh, input is not uniformly distributed, then we may not have uh, we may not achieve the uh, sorting in linear time uh, because this this distribution makes sure that each bucket has some elements or you know uh, not all the elements fall into your one bucket okay that's uh, then we will not get any advantage if uh, all the inputs fall in one bucket so algorithm is simple bucket sort it takes your input array and let's see, let's let B 0 to um, here is uh, this is actually N uh, in your array 0 to N minus 1. An element so you're, uh, indexing from 0 to n minus 1. Okay. Now a dot length means is equal to n. So uh, say a this array a it has 10 elements so n equal to 10. Okay. Now for i equal to 0 to n minus 1 means i equal to 0 to n minus 1 9 what you do take this array b and uh, link it to an empty list. So each b i will be linking to an empty list. Now here we are making use of linked lists okay remember this thing uh, empty list. Now go back to the array 1 for each element in the array we insert a of i into the list which position n multiplied by a of i so let's say where the 7.78 will go so 0.78 and multiplied by n is equal to 10 so it goes 7.8 but we are choosing a nearest integer remember here or so we will choose 7 so it will go 0.78 will go in the bucket number 7 okay now we have inserted here 0 0.78 but now you might be wondering why it is uh, you know post away so think about it say it's a linked list right so this first element links to the 7 8 but when the 7 2 comes 7 2 will be added and 7 2 will have the pointer to 7 8 so it's a linked list structure okay same way we can say 0 0.17 0 0.17 multiplied by 10 goes to 1.7 right and 1.7 means goes to the bucket 1 right in same way we can you know uh, fit other elements say here 30.39 39 multiplied by 10 3.9 nearest integer would be 3 goes to the 3 Now same way say 0 0.72 so 0 0.72 multiplied by 10 becomes 7.2 goes to the bucket number 7. So after after uh, 
Step number six, we have all the elements in the A we have put in the buckets. Okay. Now our job is very, very simple. We just sort the list B i means, means we sort all these linked lists. So all the numbers say in, in this bucket, we sort it. Now here to sort the elements in B i, we can use any algorithm. Right. If you want to use uh, say uh, best case performance, we use here the order of n linear time algorithm. Let's say n log n, we can use heap sort or you know. But here idea is that just sort the list bi and after you know because these are randomly distributed numbers. So you might not expect that that one bucket will have so many numbers. So fairly fairly simple sorting you would need here. So it will be uh, you know it will be simple. After that, after you sort this, you just concatenate the lists b zero so to b n minus one, and you got the sorted list. Isn't it simple? It's very simple. It's not too complicated. Now let's analyze this uh, algorithm. About uh, you know, uh, we're gonna see how much time is gonna take. So if we go back, say up to after six, uh, up to the step number six, up to this step number six, what we are doing here, we are comparing each element in A with n multiplied by A i and putting into the corresponding bucket. So here we are not spending uh, you know much time, it is a linear order, right. So up to step 6 we have the linear order sorting. Now here gets complicated, sorting the numbers in each bucket. So here it gets complicated worst case n is square like if every number is is uh, unsorted and you are using inserts and sort then it might take order of n is square right. So let's uh, but because we uh, remember we have input uh, uniformly distributed by a random process. So we are we are using making uh, use of uh, random process here. Um, so our uh, time complexity or analysis uh, would be different, uh, you know, would make uh, use of uh, expectation. So we we not we we're gonna be talking about expected time. So before analyzing, let's say we have n i, a random variable which denotes the number of elements in bucket b i each bucket how many elements each bucket has okay and you don't know how many elements one each bucket has because uh, that will depend on uh, you know distribution of the elements so it's a random var variable okay so how much uh, so remember here for simplicity i have written uh, t of n but essentially it is expected expected time theta h order of n as we discussed the first part of the algorithm up to step number 6 will be order of n and then the number of elements in each bucket worst case will be order of n square. However, because it is a random variable we may have one element in a bucket then we are done we do not have to spend much time it is linear but we may have 10 elements and we are assuming here that we are sorting in a worst case. So expectation of order of n square, right? And we are going from zero to n minus one. It's zero to n minus one because we have n, you know, n buckets, zeroth bucket, and n up to n minus one bucket. And we are adding summing up the all time. Easy, simple. Now our job is just to calculate 
expectation of order of n i square right and just sum it up or we can represent the whole thing uh, with this equation theta h plus uh, sigma i equal to 0 to n minus 1. So, we can you know take expectation inside the bracket and you know order of expectation n e square that is a rule uh, uh, probability rule. Uh, those who are not familiar with the expectations uh, you may quickly uh, go through a you know textbook of statistics or probability if not just remember you can you can take expectation in this way as well and now to go further let's define a, an indicator random variable remember an indicator random variable we discussed in one of the previous lecture where i was uh, I was explaining how to analyze randomized algorithm. There we discussed uh, the indicator random variable. So, let us define one indicator random variable x i j. What it means that this variable will be 1 okay, if a i j means element which is stored at location j in original array a it falls in bucket i. Okay, so x i j okay, element is stored at location j in original array i. It is an indicator random variable. So, it will have if it falls in a bucket i, then its value is 1, right, but with the probability of. 1 by n. Why 1 by n? Because we have n choices here, right? We have n buckets. If it does not fall, then its value will be 0. Okay. Now, for i equal to 0 to n minus 1 and j equal to 1 to n, what we can write? n i, n i is uh, number of elements placed in you know in a bucket is just summation of this indicator random variable j equal to 1 to n because you have in original array you have n elements see original array you have your elements goes from 1 to n j equal to 1 to n i j ok and it is a random variable. So, you know x i j if it falls in the bucket you are going to count it if it does not fall then its value will be 0 and you do it for for each element in the original array. So, it will it can we can represent it with the summation j equal to 1 to n x i j. Now, our job is to get the value of x i j right and n now you see we need to calculate expectation of n, is, n i square. So, expectation of n i square we can represent it in this way as well we can make use of uh, this expression can make use of the expression of n i equal to x j from 1 to n x i j we substituted uh, n i in the t t n equation we can also represent it in this way uh, we can we what we did here we just expanded because it is the whole square and we just uh, whole square of a series uh, in mathematics you know if you are not familiar with uh, uh, mathematics of summation you can go and you know quickly check a math book but we can represent it in this way as well as uh, it is represented here in this equation that summation of x i j whole square is equal to summation of x i j square plus 
summation of x i j x i k if k is another variable condition is that k is not equal to j because you have already taken when k equal to j you have already included it in x i j square good now you can take the expectation inside the summation and can represent it in this y okay good so far so good you are with me simple and here now expectation of e of x i j square okay we have calculated i'll come back to this equation a bit later so let's let's first define the indicator and a variable as i was talking about it will take the value 1 with the probability 1 by n if a j falls in bucket i so what we can do expectation of x i j how we can calculate 1 e square dot 1 by n if it falls otherwise what is the otherwise 0 so what what's our formula for expectation is just a quick review if x is random variable x and probability of happening x right now x can take two values right 1 and 0 so with the 1 it has probability 1 by n with the 0 right it has probability 1 minus 1 by n okay so we get the expectation 1 by n and we substituted this 1 by n in the original equation back here that's how this term comes now our job is to find the value of expectation x i j x i k right so x i j x i k we can you know uh, e of x i j multiplied by expectation of x i k which is 1 by n multiplied by 1 by n we can substitute this value in the original equation okay so that's how 1 by n square terms came and it's very simple you know you expand it summation of 1 by n is called n into 1 over n and summation double summation of 1 by n square is n into n minus 1 dot 1 by n square 